we will be going to the welcoming address and uh, we were very fortunate of course to have uh, the founder of the Zermatt Summit and the president of the Zermatt Summit Foundation here, Christopher Wassermann, a very experienced entrepreneur but who's also one of the pioneers in the thinking uh, that we uh, are talking about uh, over the next two and a half years and in that one key motto, humanizing globalization, we're very happy to hear about his thoughts, Christopher Wassermann, please. So welcome. I know a lot of you are coming from, from far away, and so we're very honored that, of your commitment to come here to Zermatt. Um, I think about half of the people here come every year, but the other half is new. And so thank you for coming here. And uh, we have roughly 45 countries. I don't know if this edition has so many, but we have a lot of international participants. So thank you. So I wanted to give you a short, um, introduction on what is Zermatt Summit doing, what is our goal, what is our vision, and uh, why we're here. And I thought I would do this uh, in the next 10 minutes uh, for those who are here for the first time. So we're a foundation, we're a non-profit organization recognized by the, uh, the Swiss government uh, based in, uh, in Zermatt. And our goal, I will come back later, and we exist since 2010. Why 2010? Because you heard about this huge financial crisis in 2009, 2008, where the world nearly collapsed, and where the taxpayers bailed out the banks, where we were thinking that after that horrible situation, things would uh, change dramatically, and uh, unfortunately, they haven't. So we said, let's create a foundation where we can show there are other ways uh, there is hope for the future, and uh, we need finance and business to work for the common good. So why another meeting like us? You know, you hear a lot about economic summits everywhere nowadays, um, but this one is a little bit unique. Why is it unique? Because we think the current model, as I just said, the current economic model has shown growth and wealth, but is now coming to become unsustainable. Uh, and it has lost the capacity to be regulated. There is an uh, ethics and politics have been unlinked to the capitalist or to, let's say, to the, uh, to the economic system. And uh, this tends to nurture a speculative race of finance. So there's a, the economy of finance, which is 10, 20 times bigger than the economy of goods and services. So you have this disconnection, which is getting uh, uh, worse every year. And of course, the, uh, th what we try to fight for is for the real economy of producing goods and services. Yes, the real economy. Um, and of course, the consequence of that is we have a problem with biodiversity, poverty, inequalities, situation of injustice, exclusion and alienation are some of the dysfunctions. So we're not here in the discussion of who is right, Davos or Porto Alegre. We're trying here to not so much to analyze what is wrong, but to try to show that there are solutions for now, nowadays. And so our vision is to say, can we, we want to mobilize the private sector. We want to mobilize and inspire the entrepreneurs because we think the private sector or business and finance have a huge leverage and power to change things for the common good. And um, we put here the, the word community, but in fact, we're like a family here. And I think we had a discussion with Gunther today. A family is more than a community. A family means that we can agree to disagree, but we stay in the family. It doesn't mean we're going to create another community because we don't agree. So it's quite different. This is why I'm really happy to see friendly faces here of people who come back and who really believe in this. Um, we talk a lot about the common good. Common good is, uh, will be uh, explained um, much better than I by, by Adrian in a few minutes, so I will not spend too much time on that, but that is part of our core values, let's say. Uh, and we say the common good is really living together as individuals, but also as a group. And then we have the concept of servant leaders, because we feel that uh, leaders, of course, uh, have a huge role in being servant, servant to their organizations, to their mission. And they have to bring vision and purpose. And we're not talking about managers and technocrats, but leaders. Finally, we view humanizing, you saw that in the first slide, humanizing as a force 
which enables the individual to be respected in all its dimensions and which empower leaders to care for the people in their organizations. We think this is very important. We also encourage unifying private and professional lives. You know, some people live two different lives and get schizophrenia and they get, uh, you have to use medication after a while, which is very sad. So what makes us unique? I think it's the spirit which comes from the participants who are here, which engages the minds, the intelligence, but also the hearts. The conscious and spiritual dimension of leadership, the concern for the person and for values and ethics, the fact that actually every one of us has a responsibility. So I feel a lot of gratitude, but I also feel responsibility not to leave uh, the world in the state it is now for the next generation. This is not possible. Uh, we want to show uh, disruptive, innovative models, economic models that can transform the world. And we want to present also new leaders as role models. We like uh, very much Ronaldo, the football, the football expert, as a role model, but I think we need other role models too. And why not from business? Now, uh, what have we done over the years? Um, so I think, I, I'm sorry, my slides have not come with my speech, so you've heard about this. So what have we done concretely? So we've, we've worked with networks of entrepreneurs, like the Centre des Jeunes Dirigeants in France, like the Ashoka Network you heard from Os Gredig. Ashoka Network is a, is a network of social entrepreneurs where we co-financed a, a contest and we had the winners here and we had some seed money to help them out. And these are all entrepreneurs who are solving social, societal, environmental problems. And of course, this year, what is really interesting is you will hear in the next round table, people, entrepreneurs who were here last year and who will present what has happened in the last year so that we can show some groundwork, some, some, some real uh, uh, practical um, achievements. So you will hear about Li-Fi. Uh, so I saw some of you trying to download the application. So the application can be downloaded here uh, where the coffee machine is and at the entrance. Not, I don't think in the room here because there's a special setup. Uh, so you will hear about Li-Fi, you will hear about Sky Sales, you will hear about Ecofungi and about Bonaverde. And you will see in one year, thanks to Sir Matt Contacts, what has happened. So over the years, we've had more than 200 speakers, 1,000 participants from quite a few countries. I mentioned the Entrepreneurs Network. I mentioned that we have invested in seed money, so it's not really uh, huge amounts, but to help get projects off the ground. I mentioned Deep Dive, which is a, a special training uh, leadership course. I mentioned Club of 100, which is a, a new initiative we have started to, to try to help us financially. And Knowledge Circle, these are young leaders. So who has been here over the years? Some uh, interesting figures like Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. We've had Nobel Prizes. We've, had, we've, had, we've tried to invite economists who work not only on mathematics, but work on social models, you know, that all the, the, the Nobel Prizes uh, who have been named now uh, for their work was 25 years ago, 30 years ago, and a lot of them is algorithms and mathematics. And only few economics have worked on social issues. So we invited Hernando de Soto, who is a Peruvian economist. We invited uh, uh, um, uh, Manfred Van Nief from Chile and others who have really done some very pioneering work on new economic models. We've had big companies or members of big companies because obviously we think the entrepreneurs can bring change, but we also want to uh, liaise with the bigger groups because we think they also have a role to play and, and, and to work with them. Now, uh, I will not spend a lot of time of why things are not working well because some people do this better than me. And here you see uh, something that is happening in, in Davos. So we will talk about circular economy and blue economy during these, these few days. And what is interesting is that the circular economy is actually putting the responsibility on the producers and not only on the users, on the whole life of the product until the end. And so that means that the circular economy is really the next step. 
from the linear economy that we know today. What is also interesting to find out is that the, the, the circular economy is local, decentralized, and it promotes service life extension. And um, this is, of course, very important. If you ask Gunther Pauli, who is here with us for the third year in a row, you know, the climate change is not the problem. The problem is the business model we have. If we continue the business model where we, are, we have the supply chain model, we try to produce at low cost, high volume items. Um, uh, uh, this is going to stop innovation, but this is also uh, not going to help us for the future. And so if we change business models, and this is what we're trying to show here, that there are new business models inspired by nature, there's plenty, there's abundance. And so nature is here our, uh, for us uh, the big inspiration for what you will hear about the blue economy. In the next few days, you he see here two pictures that I will very briefly comment. One is uh, um, plankton or algas. How do you say in English? Des algues? Seaweed. Seaweed, seaweed, thank you. Seaweed absorbing microparticles. And you will hear more about that, how to about plastics. It's a small amount of plastics, but we haven't found ways to clean microplastics in oceans. This is a very interesting new way. And if this can be uh, done on several coasts, this is a, and, and clean beaches and clean... Uh, even in the, our famous Lac Léman, who is close he to here, we have a lot of microplastic particles. And the other picture is sky sails. This is this uh, kite, which we could not fly in Zermatt, unfortunately, this year, but we you will see a movie about this, and this is producing energy for uh, different households. Um, to go back to our, our Catholic friends, of course, we talk about integral ecology. Uh, and what is very important, I forgot to put here, is education. You will hear about education. You know, why, is, why are we not changing the way we act? A lot of it comes from education. We are, we are, we are teaching in business schools things that are not any more uh, um, uh, necessary and that are wrong, unfortunately, in some cases. So we need to improve our education and starting with, with kids. Uh, we need role models, I think I, I explained that, and we need also uh, help from government in some cases, but we should not count only on government, obviously. So as you heard from Pope Francis, he, he has this encyclic, Laudato Si, also Benedict had Caritas in Veritate, which talks about integral ecology and is split between ecology of nature, human social peace, um, and that we have to become steward, stewards or hires or heirs of and guardians of life. And what can help us in the future is to have a longer vision uh, and that we should not ignore all the threats we have and that we should really make some of the things that are happening in Zermatt better known to the outside world. Let me talk very briefly. We will also hear about the digital economy. Some uh, companies in the traditional economy are actually hybrid models using the digital economy, like Bonaverde. You will hear about them. And so the digital economy is based on the fourth industrial revolution, which is uh, developing around disruptive technologies in, 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 in artificial intelligence, robotics, Internet of Things. So we will hear about that. The priority, of course, is that technology is serving humankind, and not the other way around. Finally, I would like to talk about very briefly about leadership. We talked about that. Um, if we want to change the world, we have to change ourselves. Obviously, we talked about servant leaders. And um, we have used uh, a movement in the UK called Blueprint for Better Business, uh, who came here, in, in, uh, who came to, to Zermatt, and they have started this initiative which uh, looks at um, leadership based on certain values and on certain behaviors. So I don't have time to go in detail on this slide, but it starts with the dignity and value of people, the common good, but also solidarity, subsidiarity, reciprocity, plurality, sustainability. All these um, um, behaviors and values are part of the Catholic social thought, but it's been reworked and so here we have a model which I have used in my company, which is actually integrating in the strategy a purpose-driven organization, which has to be good for the employees as a responsible employer, good for the 
for the community as a good citizen, honest and fair to customers and suppliers, but also a guardian for future generation and purpose for long-term sustainability. Finally, why did we choose this team, uh, entrepreneurship? Because entre the most incredible and most powerful enterprise is the creation by, by human, by entrepreneurs, and how to stimulate innovation and initiate change. They are the change makers, the entrepreneurs. And so you will hear about 30 entrepreneurs during these two days. And so I think when you leave this place, I hope that you, you can have hope. Because when we, when we hear some of the news, it is sometimes uh, flabbergasting and discouraging. Finally, I would like to thank our partners, our sponsors, who are here. I will not name all of them, but I really thank them for their support. I would like to thank the members of our board. I think everybody is here except maybe one who's coming just slightly later. I would like to thank the speakers who come uh, with us this year and the team behind this event, obviously not to name them, which is very important. And to give you also some dates for next year. Um, and of course, we need, we need, of course, your help to make sure that this event can happen. Let me go back to my poem, because I think it's much to do with our, our theme. And it has to do, and I, will, I, have, I, cannot, I cannot say it by heart, but it says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you very much.